So I was, uh, my slippery slope is a literal slippery slope. It's shoot. I'm sure most of you are familiar with shoot. Um, so I was a snowboarder for 20 years. And then about eight years ago, I decided to make the transition to telemark skiing. I forewent um, alpine skiing and uh, went straight to telemark. My first year was brutal, to say the least. And uh, my second year, I was starting to get it somewhat. You know, I would chase my friends around. Mad River. I got a pass at Mad River, so it was like I was definitely doing it. Um, so I would chase my friends around. I barely keep up with them, but I, my second year I was getting better and better. And then, uh, kind of late in the season, um, it was a pretty not a great season, not a great ski season, and we had you know one of those. Well, it was a powder day because there was like 10 inches of snow, but it was on top of crap. And I was getting good or better, and I felt like I was like really ready to make a jump. And uh, I was at Mad River, and I ran into my friend Richard, and maybe some of you guys know Richard Savory, he's a ski instructor, great skier. And I was going to take a couple runs with him, and I was like really excited to like show my stuff and get some tips from him. So we get off the top of the single and we're going to ski shoot. And I'm a little aggressive because I want him to like think I'm pretty good. <laughs> but I also want him to know that I'm not that good and I need his help. Um, which I quickly did by falling on that very first little pitch there where you kind of, after you get off the lift, you kind of go down and there's a steep little rump there. And I fell and I was sliding and I saw this little fluff of snow and I was just going to just you know, fluff into that fluff of snow. But before I could get there, a little monkey fist kind of punched me in the rib from in the from a rock or a piece of ice and uh, knocked the wind out of me. And so I'm laying there, and Richard skis up, and he's like, how you doing? And I was like, I just got the wind knocked out of me. <laughs> and he's like, were you sure you're all right? You don't sound very good. I was like, <laughs> and then uh, my buddy Dave goes over the lift. He's like, "Oh, that didn't look good. Are you okay?" I was like, "I just gonna kiss my dad. And he goes on. And then my wife goes over, and I'm like, "She's like, why is everyone around you?" And I was like, "I just trying to catch my breath." <laughs> and then it seemed like everybody I knew on the mountain that day slowly <laughs> went right over me on the trail, and then skied the hundred feet down to where I was. And um, after about ten minutes. <laughs> and the ski patrol came up, and and they were like, "You are not. Something's not right with you. You're not catching your breath." I was like, "I'm okay. I'm just gonna be okay." <laughs> and uh, they were like, "You got to take the sled down." And I was like, "This don't shoot." And he's like, "Yeah, don't shoot." And I was like, "Can I just walk back up there?" <laughs> and they were like, "No, you have to. You have to take the sled. It's policy. You can't. You can't like hike and then take the sled." <laughs> and I didn't want to take the sled at all. Um, so they get the sled, and this is not this is not stove. The sled is, I mean, I, the sled is ancient, and it's made of like pig iron, like no aluminum or the thing was a big heavy sled. And they lay me down in the sled, and as soon as I lay down, I can't breathe because it turns out I collapsed a lung and broke a rib. And wow. as soon as I lay down, I couldn't breathe at all, so I was like clambering to sit up, and they're like, "What are you doing?" I was like, <laughs> and I made myself sit up. I was like, I can't breathe when I lay down. And they're like, Well, you got, you can't go to. I was like, Can I just work it? <laughs> so, they made me lay down again. I can't breathe. I pull myself up, and uh, they get the ski patrol woman. I don't remember her name. She was very cute, and, but she was the smallest ski patrol person. It wasn't her cuteness that got her in the sled with me. It was her smallness. She gets in the slide behind me, so she, so I have a throne to sit upright on my sled ride down chute. So the very first thing you get to on chute is those like rock ledges, those drops, and but there's that little. Does everyone, does everyone know that little like side place you can go on chute? And so we go that way, and this super stud Bart is at the front of the slide. He's got like the handles, and he's in front, and then there's a guy behind with a leash. And we start to go, we kind of side across the hill to that side part that you can miss those first ledges. And, but still, the moguls are seven, you know, they're seven foot, eight foot tall moguls. And we start down the first one, and the guy in the back, he his binding releases. 
in falls. And so there's this pig iron sled, which I don't know how much it weighs, 200 pounds. I'm weighing in a, a buck, buck 80, and then this woman, the cute girl who's either somewhere between 90 and 180 pounds. And <laughs> so I don't know, we're up to around like five or 600 pounds, and the guy falls down, and we run over Bart like he is a pound of butter. <laughs> and he disappears, we just run him over. And we start going down that little thing. But that trail doesn't, isn't a straight trail, that, stra that trail turns. So, but we don't turn, because we're in the big iron sled, and we just go straight into the woods, gaining speed, and I don't know, you know this trail, that's like one of the steepest parts of the mountain, and we're heading into the woods, and you know, you know what you do on a sled, when you're in a sled and it's run away, you jump out. But I'm in so much pain, I'm like, what do I do, what do I do? <laughs> just like, crying, like, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And she's just holding on to me, and we head into the woods, and luckily, we hit the first tree we came to, which is really great. Um, but uh, Bart was gone. No one knew where he was. And up until this point, I had been the guest of honor, and now no one cared about me. Everyone was like, where's Bart? And he, we left him somewhere up on the trail, and he's buried in the snow somewhere. And. Uh, Everyone's like screaming, Bart, Bart, Bart. And then I see this little movement in the tree well of the tree that we're stuck in. And uh, I see the tip of his ski, and I go, He's in the tree well. <laughs> and everyone's like, He's in the tree well. And they throw me aside. And they pull the sled off, and they rip this fucking stud out of the, water, out of the snow. He dusts himself off. Someone hands him his ski like he's a king, and he just puts it back on grabs this thing, the sled, and they sit me back in there, I'm in my throne, and they take me down chute. And i never seen anything like this guy's thighs were made of titanium. Like 600 pounds of sled, and he's just going straight over these moguls. It was amazing to be in his presence. <laughs> the long. <laughs>